Hi guys, it's Kenny at Lionel for Love. Just got home from work and running the daylights out of the 736. Got it pulling 10 cars right now and it's not having any problem at all with it. I, I had one of these before and I got it when I just found out what MPH engines were so I really didn't appreciate how good of an engine it actually was. I was a post-war holdout but I got turned on to a uh, command control a couple years ago and I'm just now coming back to the post-war again. But yeah man, that thing's starting to run smooth as silk. This guy is better at filming. Let's go over here and get another look at it. There's your real clickety clack <laughs> that they got on the MTA strings the clickety clack What an engine. You never know what you can find at York. Oh, you know, I predict there'll be a lot of nice post-war stuff coming out of basements over the next 10 years. I mean, primo stuff. The boxes. You know, that the guys bought in the 80s and the 70s that they've had in their basements for years and years. I mean, she'll, she'll pull that heavy train down that low speed. Which is what we were hoping for after a day or so running it. Of course the smoke pellets aren't quite as aromatic and puffing out at that speed.
think I'm gonna hold it for a minute just to show everybody how cool it smokes, man. I don't know why, but some smoke units are better than others. I need to bring it over here first. Maybe from this angle I can hold it. And show you guys what a smoking machine we got here. And I do mean smoking. Let's get her a little bit hot there. There she goes. Blows out those nice O's too. And I still have not made the hole bigger like I usually do. You know, where the thimble thing goes up into the actual smoke unit, that hole, I usually take that and enlarge it a little bit to let more air through. It only makes sense that if you do that, you'd get more smoke. Yeah, the Z1000, I mean uh, Z4000 is supposed to arrive tomorrow, so we'll be running that tomorrow. And I also have to service this tender over the weekend. Let's take this thing around and park it. I picked this up today while I was out. Uh, I was thinking like, dude, you need to organize all your stuff, you know? Because I've been finding things and finding things. And I myself can, and I thought about, you know, what about a tackle box, you know? And there you go. You keep all your, you know, you got different areas for different things. It's got some more separators down here in the bottom. You know, this way I'll say, you know, where is that damn E-unit or, you know, and I've got to get a few more of these. This one's my dad's. That one I brought, bought at a garage sale for five bucks. All these bins you see, they have parts in them. Boxes, they have parts in them. Every single one. Of uh, I just ordered a motor off of eBay for this chassis, which is exactly the same as the 736 there. That is a 746. And this body here is this is the body for it. You guys will not believe this, but I bought that train with a motor, the original smoke unit, everything in this shell. For 40 bucks or 39 something. And it had a motor in it, post-war motor, post-war smoke unit. And just because someone had repainted it and customized it, no one bid on it. And I said, hey, 
just for the show. I'll take a chance, you know. I'm going to send this to Len Carpelli to restore because he has the silk screening uh, machine that he bought from Elliot Welts. Once again, the guy's name is Len Carpelli. And he told me he would restore this for $80. Can't beat that. Because you're not going to duplicate that strike. That strike, rather. You're not. And the only ones I've ever seen sold have been the peel and stick kind. And, you know, that that's just not, not cutting it for that. So I do now have a motor on the way. I need to get that to Len Carpelli. I need to get all these screws, bolts organized. This table's coming out of here. Which, you see I've been doing some work. Uh, one thing you must have for your new guys. You need a fine needlepoint applicator to get in the places where that oil needs to go. This particular what I'm using right now is ATF. Yes, you heard me. Automatic transmission fluid. It works great. I've been using it for over 10 years. The only downfall to it is I won't use it like on the Ross track. Okay, but I do use it on the Lionel stuff with fast track. Do you see when I oiled some of those wheels? Watch this. But this also, at the same time, cleans the wheels. This is ATF conducts electricity. So, you know, I won't use it on anything that I'm not going to run on the fast track. You know, and you got a lot of wheels to clean, but, you know, there's decades of shit on there on those wheels all the time. And the SPs, they're running about 25 bucks a bottle now. Maybe you can look out and get them for, for 15 once in a while. Just think if you had a couple cases of those. Well, I wouldn't sell them if I did. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you sold them at 20 it would be a bargain. I mean, I was born in 1964, and I don't know what the price of smoke pellets was back in, you know, the post-war era. But I bet, I bet it was, you know, one or two dollars or something, you know, like that. But anyway... The big boy's fixed. It will be back. I have a Protosound GG1 coming. And a uh, eight or nine car set of New Haven MTH cars. So I think next weekend will be the weekend when I pay the carpenter to come over and come and tack this layout up. I'm going to use this weekend to get all this stuff organized, take the table out of here, because when I build the layout, I'll have a little space on that where I'm going to do my engine work and, you know, operating car work, things like that.
once again, I cannot stress enough, get this book. Greenberg's Repair and Op Operating Manual for Lionel Trains. 1945 to 1969. It's available on Amazon, new and used. And if an idiot like me can fix these trains and get them going, I know you certainly can. I mean, it's got everything in it. Accessories. I mean, look how much stuff's in here about the just the 450 signal bridge. Three pages. Now it tells you all the different ways you can hook it up. And, and you know, it will take you where you're going. Like what if you, yeah, there you go. If you wanted to have just a sig signal, single track, you could mount the other one on the top. You know, and they've got those IR things now for a replacement of the 153C contactor. Int transformers. You want to rebuild one? They'll tell you how. You know, you got a bad cord on one? Open it up. See where the cord goes. See? Right there? It shows you. Boom, ba boom. See how they tied a little knot in the back of the plate, terminal plate? So the cord wouldn't move. <clears throat> kind of what they do on the, the MTH uh, tenders. But it's got that thing there. And there's every type of transformer post war in here. Every type. Every type. It's got the old ones that had the steps. It just, it never stops. I think almost. Every product that they made is in this book. Something about it. Now there's the lumber mill. And that's what's inside of that. The post-war one. It was a strip of film. I think it was 16 millimeter. And you had to get all this uh, tension right. For it to work because I fixed about four or five of these and the key is you know this this part here has a little give to it and you have to see you know where hey, I'll tell you I think this is what drive line is wrapped one and a half turns around the pulley. Do you just see how it, it all makes sense when you read this? It starts to become something. See how the, the motor worked? Yeah, that that was ingenious there. That was really cool. And so were a lot of the other accessories. They're all in here. This is the forklift. Yeah, 
One guy asked me, does it tell you how to fix it? And, you know, in a roundabout way, yes, it does give you the, the parts that are hard. It tells you what to do. I remember how proud of myself I was when I fixed my first gate, man. I mean, I was just so proud of myself. It does make you feel great, man, when you get something running. I'd like to pick up one of those. Those are cool. The 44 and 45 missile rocket launchers. But you can't have them all. So you've got to get you about, I don't know, 10 or 20 of them and be happy. Between the command control and that, couple passenger sets, some rolling stock, a good transformer. Uh, I might be having some stuff for sale here in a little bit. I'll make sure that I give you guys first hit at it. I'll advertise it on, on the, the channel. But yeah, man, this was on sale today. And I, I'm not really particularly fond of, of Walmart, but for 14 bucks, I'll take it. Seven trace, hip roof box, up to 59 divisible compartments. You know, and as you work on different things, you'll need that stuff. You'll need 59 compartments. Well, that's about it. I am thinking about perhaps purchasing a new TIU and remote. I don't ever buy anything new. Never. But uh, I've got to give Marty Fitzhenry a call and see if he has uh, any put together that he would be willing to sell. Otherwise, I think I'm going to take the plunge and and just just get a new one so there's no problems with that. You know, and I got to make sure I I wire this layout up in the star pattern. Cuz if you don't, you will have problems. Guaranteed. That's about it for tonight. We're going to roll a little bit more, have some dinner, watch a little bit of YouTube. If I didn't have to work tomorrow, but I do. You guys have a happy Memorial Day weekend. No doubt you'll see me on here again over the weekend. couple more instructional videos. But this is what Fast Track's good for. Just running these old shit and, you know, getting them wheels clean. If you use ATF as lubricant. The way that I found out about that was some guy at a train store back in the day you know he ran the trains constantly at Christmas and he noticed that if he put tranny fluid on the lubrication that he could let him go all day he was having to stop and you know re-oil them you know every four hours or something and you know ATF pretty much stays where you put it you know it's a heavier viscosity than the oil and you know when oil gets on the track it's over pretty much yeah but man this 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 turned out good 
Yeah, the guy said, the motor's no good in it. I said, oh, I, you know, locked up too, man. I said, yeah, 120 bucks. I said, mm hmm, for something that's locked up. I said, we can't do that. I said, I'll give you 80 bucks for it. How about that? Seventy cents later for washers. Man, we got three more post four stuff, man. Oh, one fella wanted to know what magnet traction is. You know, I got a lot of new people on my channel, which is cool. Uh, I Okay, here's a piece of track. Mm -hmm. Lost track. And set that down. Put this new chassis down. This also has magnet traction. And there's magnets inside of the axis. And, you know, it helps it. See? It helps it stick. This one's not so good. The one wheel, the back wheel is. You know, these wheels may, may need cleaned also. But it has magnetic properties. That's not a good example. So, well, you can take turns faster and stuff because the, the magnets strip the track. That was a terrible example. I should rehearse some of this trip. But I never do. This is not Eric's trains. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is Kenny at Lionel for less. I'm done running my mouth for tonight. You guys all have a happy, safe weekend. Put Jesus Christ first in your life. And great things will happen for you. Remember how I told you guys to wear the gloves when you're working on it? Your hands get so dirty that that you can't get them clean. So I usually can get two or three uses out of, out of a pair. You know, for three bucks for ten pairs, shit. Alright guys. God bless.